I'm not talking about everything to do with presidential candidates and the history of presidential candidates. I'm talking about what I was taught in high school by my government teacher and social studies teacher. Why lesser skilled executives become political party candidates for federal chief executive, that is the U.S. president and commander in chief. There were more highly skilled in the past and are less experienced and less highly skilled today. Uh, this was true even more than 50 years ago when I was a high school student. <clears throat> now, in the early 1970s, my high school government teacher was Charlie Jenkins. And my social studies teacher was William Jenkins. They were often called just Brother Jenkins. One was black, one was white. Charlie Jenkins, Mr. William Bill Jenkins, Charlie Jenkins on the left, Bill Jenkins on the right. These are hip high school teachers. Now, this was, um, we're going to talk about the first few presidents uh of the united states and then the most recent presidents now in the first presidential administration under the constitution remember we'd had other forms of government <laughs> <coughs> pardon me uh, george washington was president washington had previously been elected to 16 terms in the Virginia legislature had an even longer career as a military leader and had been president of the Constitutional Convention. 12 different men received electoral, electoral college votes for president. In this election, there's likely to only be two people, Donald Trump and Kamala Harris, but this was not true of the past. There uh, Electoral College would vote for many different people. Now, all 12 of the uh, original, you know, the first Electoral College candidates were excellent candidates. <clears throat> One had already been president of the United States under a different form of government, John Hancock. Another, George Clinton, would be vice president under our third president, Thomas Jefferson. So in that first administration, John Adams was vice president, John Jay, who also received votes for president in the Electoral College, was briefly Secretary of State. Uh, Thomas Jefferson then became Secretary of State because John Jay became the first Chief Justice of the United States the Supreme Court. The second president was John Adams. His vice president was the previous Secretary of State, Thomas Jefferson. John Marshall was briefly Secretary of State, but became Chief Justice, and John Jay had resigned to become Governor of New York. <coughs> um, and the third presidential, third president was Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> He had a lot of executive experience, including being the governor of Virginia. George Clinton had been the governor of New York. Madison became secretary of state and served eight years um, as secretary of state. Then Madison served as president. Elbridge Jerry was his vice president and Monroe was secretary of state. Now, Jerry uh, had been uh, governor of Massachusetts and had extensive experience as an executive. Then Monroe was president and he had been governor of Virginia. 
Tompkins was his vice president, and he had been governor of New York, and John Quincy Adams was secretary of state. Uh, Quincy Adams became the next president. The first six presidents under the Constitution had long experience as administrators and executives in public administration. What was wanted was a chief executive and commander in chief with military experience and executive experience as a mayor, governor, federal cabinet secretary, and then VP or president. The skills of an executive are different from the skills of a legislator or judge. <clears throat> um, both of the Mr. Jenkins explained that as the special interest groups gained more power, the good experienced administrators would not rise as high uh, and not high enough to become candidates in most kind. A special interest group um, would determine who was the candidate and who was president. Now, a good mayor, an executive, would not be elected governor because he would gain enemies who would work against him. A good governor would not be elected president because he would gain enemies who would work against him. This is, and remember, that's what I was taught in high school, because our highest executive offices <clears throat> are now about which special interest group prevails and not about who are the best government executives. Now, that's different than it was uh, for early presidents. They just wanted the best available executives. <clears throat> now, when I was in high school, President Nixon, Richard Nixon, was president, and he had never been a public administrator with executive experience. So there's already a vast difference and he was elected back in the 1960s. Uh, Nixon had been in the U.S. Navy in World War II, a quartermaster, never left California. Uh, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, he moved military supplies in and out of a California warehouse. Nixon was elected to the House and the Senate. His primary government experience was as a legislator. <clears throat> Before him, President Lyndon Baines Johnson. Now, he had some public administration experience. He'd been appointed head of the uh, Texas National Youth Administration by President Franklin Roosevelt. But he only served two years there, then went to the House and Senate. And his primary government experience was as a legislator. <clears throat> Johnson had actually used his time as head of the Texas National Youth Administration to uh, set himself up for being elected to the U.S. House. Now, President John F. Kennedy had some public administration experience as a Navy lieutenant in World War II. He was in combat by uh, his being in command of a PT boat. And he was elected to the House and the Senate, but again, his primary government experience was as a legislator, not as an executive. This is much different than the first presidents. Now, Eisenhower had some public administration experience as commander of Schaaf and as a five-star general of the U.S. Army. <clears throat> uh, Truman had some public administration experience as what was then called a presiding judge of Jackson County. This is now called chief executive. And then Truman was elected in the federal government in the legislature, the U.S. Senate. <clears throat> Early presidents had a great deal of executive experience in government. President Grover Cleveland, for example, served as mayor of Buffalo, New York, then as governor of New York, and then was elected president of the United States. He served until 1897. Now look at the most recent presidents and candidates. Donald Trump had zero government experience. 
before becoming president. His only prior experience and interest was in making money for Donald Trump. Uh, Kamal Harris had executive experience as a district attorney and state attorney general, but the enemies one makes in those offices are not like the rich enemies made as a mayor or governor. Joe Biden had never held an executive position. He'd served as a senator from Delaware, representing the special interests of the nation's corporation. According to CNBC and Wikipedia, over half of all New York Stock Exchange listed corporations and over three-fifths of the Fortune 500 are legally incorporated in Delaware. Over 90% of all U.S.-based companies that went public in 2021 incorporated themselves in Delaware. That's why the majority of the nation's corporations supported Joe Biden over Donald Trump. They had known that Joe Biden would continue to serve them, as he had for over 40 years in government service. <clears throat> Barack Obama never held an executive government position. He had served as a legislator in the U.S. Senate. George W. Bush had some executive experience uh, in government, as had Bill Clinton. But overall, the trend has been to have presidential candidates with less government executive experience. That's because, unlike the early presidents, when the interest was then having good government, the political party presidents, uh, they serve special interests. Their allies in the nation's major news outlets conceal this because they are owned and operated by those special interests. Same for the educational institutions. So I doubt very much that your, if you're a recent graduate, high school government and social studies uh, taught you what my teachers taught me schools have been taken over by the special interests. Uh, when Donald Trump was president, he succeeded in making the rich richer. In that sense, he was a pro-business president. But Joe Biden was much better for business corporations for Trump. And that's why Biden was elected. Had Biden been the nomination, uh, nominee this year instead of Kamala Harris, because he had a good pro-business record as president, I have every reason to believe he would have been re-elected. <clears throat> but since the uh, only uh, business track record that uh, Kamala Harris has is prosecuting businesses, I'm expecting Donald Trump will be our next president. And as I publish this on YouTube, it is Sunday, November 3rd, 2024, well before the election outcome is decided. I've actually already written a full book about this, but no one wants to publish it. I may self-publish, need some editing. And if I do publish it, I will show it on YouTube.